Hello, Will Ron. Hi, Matt Lewis. How are you? I am swell. Welcome to the DMZ, everybody. You are not Bill Scher. Bill is on assignment. Tell us uh, who you are, and it's sort of the Admiral Stockdale question, who you are and what you do. Uh, my name is Will Ron, and I am the Washington Bureau Chief of the Daily Beast. Uh, that is a dot com. We are a uh, news website uh, based out of New York City in Washington, D.C., and uh, it's good to be here, Matt. Good to talk to you. And, you know, people should know we are former colleagues at The Daily Caller, and I now write a, uh, a column at The Daily Beast, so you will work only at places with the name with the name daily in it. Um, so uh, what basically, I, you know, thank you for coming on. Um, and what thank Bill you. and I as, tend to do is just to talk about my columns. Like this is really, Bill's not aware. This is really just where I get to plug my columns. So. We're just going to talk about you for a while here. It's kind of about me. Uh, Bill doesn't okay. realize yeah. that this is sort of like happy days, right? So when the show first started, Richie Cunningham was kind of going to be the star. And then eventually yeah. Fonzie. Fonzie became like the first episode, like Fonzie has like two lines. And then eventually mm -hmm. they wanted to call the show Fonzie's Happy Days. They almost wanted to call this Matt's DMZ. Um, so so just continuing about... this analogy, if you're the Fonzie, then I would be Fonzie's younger hey. cousin, right? What's his name? Like Chico or whatever? <laughs> well, there was Chachi, but there's also Spike. Chachi. That's uh, I would be the Chachi, Chachi in this situation. Yeah, you could be Chachi. I think it may call for. A, I'm going to appeal to the younger demographic of of blogging heads viewers. It is I'm funny sure that the dozens. show the show ostensibly in the 1950s, yet Chachi has like a 1970s haircut. You know, never got that. Yeah, one. yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll be sure to think about that the next time I'm high. These are the um, things. These are the things that I yeah. talk a lot about. I know a lot about this <laughs> random stuff. And you're you hung over, aren't you? I, right now doing I, this? I, I, I'm slightly I'm the, hung over. Yeah. This is true. I'm at the Daily uh, Caller office. Hit. I'm All sorry, right. go ahead. Uh, yeah, speaking of hung over people, the Daily Caller office. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, my grandmother passed away um, hmm. over the weekend. So, you know, I'm going through yeah. the Irish grieving process right now, which. Uh, well, I you think you have, have ever, you know, you, whiskey. And, uh, you have you have legitimate uh, legitimate right. Yeah, I would say do that. So. Yeah, our, yeah. This is you know our condolences. Uh, actually, you would have I guess been in D.C. Normally, you're up I in am, New York. I, uh, I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm out of I am out of the uh, the cultural capital of the world, New York City today. So, uh, have you uh, have you been? Are are you are you have you been to the the service stuff? Or are you? Uh, no, we're doing that. We're doing that. Doing um, that. We're doing that later in the week, and uh, we're going to Jersey to go and do that. And uh, so I'm noticing, like, so where does one look when they're on Blogging Heads TV? Do I look at the little camera? Do I look at myself? Do I just look around the room? Uh, <laughs> okay, so a good point. This is like acting, like, what do you do with your arms, you know? Exactly. Um, like, well, what, is, what does a human being do? You should look at the camera. And so here's, I'll tell you the little trick that Bill and I have devised is you pull your browser over so yeah. that... So that it's like your face is kind of under where the camera is. Uh huh. All right. Fine so you pull right. your browser to the right. Yeah, and then and then it looks more. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise it doesn't look good. How do we think my hair's um, messy? But, you know, <laughs> we're just gonna we're just gonna stick with the Boris Johnson right now. <laughs> you uh, can do worse. I'm a, I'm a yeah. fan. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about coolness because uh, we were talking about Fonzie. We're cool people, and this is why we're talking about coolness. We're Just cool people, cool and you're cooler. On Blogging Heads TV, talking me. about what it means to be cool. Yeah. When I started at the Daily Caller, I I was around younger people such as yourself, and I I started listening to your your music your music bands. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which are now antiquated, but at the time they were kind of cutting edge. And I you started smoking. I started dressing. <laughs> hey, what happens at the Daily Caller stays at the yeah. Daily Caller, but. Um, but no, my theory is that the cooler candidate wins, and this this isn't you know this is actually a thing, and uh, and it could be trouble for Hillary Clinton because she's a grandma, and mm -hmm. uh, she may be a lot of things, but she may not be cool. What, what do you think of that? Will? 
Uh, so you do have, I guess, kind of a, you know, it was a moment the other day, I guess you, you had TMZ ambush Marco Rubio as he was leaving uh, National Airport in D.C., excuse me, Reagan National Airport in D.C. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for the Reagan. Yeah, I know. You always have to, you know, it's, it's, it's about who you're signaling to. Um, <laughs> but uh, Marco Rubio left that and TMZ ambushes him with some question like he's a celebrity. That was some kind of like little cultural moment, wasn't it there? Did you see this? Did you see this video? I, I did. It's not a hoax. And I'm just he looks good. I, I didn't even yeah. watch the video, but he's smiling. He looks happy. And the guy can talk. I mean, he can talk music. He can talk entertainment. Mm. He can talk sports. I think that matters. Yeah, no, these are all like very good qualities to have. You want the candidate to not seem like, you know, some unapproachable person. Basically, you don't want Selena Meyer from Veep. Um, yeah. Which maybe like Hillary kind of uh, uh, had, runs the risk of kind of walking into somebody who's so kind of insulated from the rest of the world. You know, all this talk about everyday Americans with her campaign. This is. This is not somebody who knows many everyday Americans, you know. This is yeah, somebody. and that harkens to the uh, "I love everyday people" thing. And I got thinking, well, uh, there's this. I think it's a David Bowie who does the song "Young American." We want the young American. Uh, I believe so. Yes. Yeah. And I was thinking but, that would be a great song for Rubio until you actually read the lyrics, and then I think it probably becomes problematic. Um, I thought the only the lyrics young American, in that song were young Americans, young Americans. Is, are there other lyrics? We want the young American. I like that part. If you could just put that on loop. But there was a time oh, years ago. Right. Yeah. There was a time years ago when that's, Hillary that's Clinton used uh, Captain Jack, the Billy Joel song Captain Jack, at, a, <laughs> at an event. Captain Jack will get you high <laughs> Or, no, it was some song that had something to do with masturbating or something in it. Uh, it's a Billy Joel song. Oh. Mm. I don't, maybe well, it wasn't uh, Captain Democrats, Jack. Democrats are so lucky when it comes to the music. Like, any musician will let, like, yeah. a Democrat play their songs, and Republicans are always getting sued. Do you remember when, like, Charlie yeah, they Crist have to play, like, like, used that David Byrne song? And Charlie Crist, <laughs> did you ever see the video of Charlie Crist having to apologize to David Byrne? God, it was so, so embarrassing. It's the most humiliating um, thing I've ever seen. Like, Republicans, like, you know... Okay, this is where the coolness factor comes in, because Republicans can never, they have no access to any cool music, because cool musicians will not let Republicans use their music. Yeah, but Hillary, could that change if the, brand of, if the brand of Republicanism changed? I mean, is it all about policy, or, like, is it possible to rebrand a younger, sort of younger, especially, I mean, it, I, I argued that, like, I mean, Barack Obama was sort of cool, right? The hope and change thing, the imagery, the logo, the, the persona, what, even though we know he's kind of a dork. I mean, the persona was that he was cool. And if you look at who it comes closest to emulating him, it's not Hillary Clinton. I mean, she doesn't have that. And maybe it's someone like a Rubio or Cruz or Paul. I mean, somebody who's younger. Um, could, could things be changing? Because like, for example, you know, you can't imagine Mitt Romney going on The Daily Show and pulling it off, or le even Letterman and doing well. Yeah. But you could imagine you could imagine Rubio going on The Daily Show or Letterman. Yeah. By the way, Letterman, ironically, Letterman and, and John Stewart are both leaving, but you, you get the idea. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're, they're replacements. Stephen Colbert or Trevor Noah or whatever. Uh, yeah, or Jimmy yeah. Kimmel or whatever. Um... You know, maybe Rubio can do the cool thing. At the same time, you know, it's like, yeah, young, good, and everything. But then you have to add Republican to the end of young. And, yeah. like, is you there don't anyone, do, don't do that. like, less cool? And I imagine they're, like, probably, like, a huge demographic of, like, uh, uh, blogging heads viewers are probably young Republicans. Uh, I'm just yeah. trying to, like, figure out the audience here. And I imagine a lot of, like, you know, like, like kids in suits at Wesleyan or something. Uh, and like young Republicans are not cool, you know. They, Kids that look like Max been. Fisher, Max Fisher. Yeah, from yeah, Max Fisher only yeah. like wealthier, you know, and uh, with like like nicely like shine shoes and like polo suits and stuff. Um, that's kind of that's. There's yeah, nothing yeah. uncooler. And speaking, of, let me just ask this: throw this out there. What do yeah. I? Do? I got the uh, the gray silver thing in the temple. 
I've yeah. been going all natural, right? Maybe like that's good. That's good. Yeah. At what point do I? I'll throw it out to the to the viewers. I mean, at what point do I need to do something? Like, like here's the thing. No, like, no, the gray uh, in the temple is what you want. People people pay money to get the gray in the temple. That's good. Some people do, but what happens yeah. when it like overtakes the temple and it's like, uh, and then you're just an old white guy? Is there yeah, is there anything less cool than that? I well then you it's, know. then it's time to die, Matt. You know then then I go. Tucker Carlson and I will put you on an ice raft and send you out to sea. <laughs> That's when I get you know when Tucker comes and has to talk with me. <laughs> yeah. um, when, when Tucker and I, just and walks in like, with a gun just to put you down. <laughs> I become like a blogger emeritus um, who they trot out, <laughs> trot it out once a year, <laughs> like at some old bloggers at the, da at the daily. Yeah. Oh, I go on the, the I, I get invited to the National Review cruise. Um, that's that's <laughs> what I do every year. <laughs> yeah, they just toss you over. That's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Laura Ingram um, comes up behind you and, and drugs you and just tosses you off the boat. <laughs> so, anyway, um, kidding. I so I'm that crazy. I'm that. I'm that crazy though. Like about the, the the notion that like coolness matters in in politics and and um and and that and that it's possible that you know this young brand of conservatives might like at least subconsciously be viewed as a little more hip to use the term the kids are using. Um, yeah, that's, that's, than, that's, that's, that hip people than, often say hip. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, then, uh, then on Hillary. the Lower East Side last night and everybody was using the word hip. <laughs> well, I mean, it, these things go, these things are cyclical, you know? Uh -huh. um, yeah, like technology. Like, page, yeah. like pagers, right? Pagers are coming yeah. back. Uh, they're cyclical. Um, so... Uh, do you agree with me then that Hillary? <laughs> this is all about just confirming uh, me. My Your my thesis? argument, that, <laughs> my thesis that validating Hillary like, does validating yeah. that um, that 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 Hillary runs the risk of of kind of being a joke at some point. Mm -hmm. Am I being like naive about that, or is that possible? Yeah, you're pro. Well, I guess it's like it's possible, um, but at the same time. You know, it's like Hillary is down with what the kids care about, which is, you know, gay marriage and, uh, and uh, you know, reproductive rights or abortion or whatever the hell you want to call it. And, uh, you know what, it's going to be really hard to be the cool candidate who's also like, yeah, and those gays shouldn't be allowed to get married. Marco's want, like walking like a really fine line on that. Yeah. With it's like, yeah. you know, I'm not against it, but it should be illegal, you know, and he's and he's, you know, it's it, you know, it's it's interesting, you know, kind of trying to, to parse his words on all of this. But um, yeah, I think uh, I think you have to uh, there's a fine. I think line it's going to be super to hard. Yeah. To just like it's like, hey, I'm like you. I listen to the arcade fire and I don't believe the two men should be able to wed. You know, it's like that's going to be just a hard sell. <laughs> I think we should do videos um, with with those messages. Um, the it, arcade it's, fire. It's, it's going to be tough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just discovered the arcade fire recently. Um, that that video about the suburbs man spoke to me. That was yeah, me in the did. circa nineteen seventy eight. Uh, Thank you. The big wheel. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, so let's talk a I didn't about realize the... you just got into Arcade Fire. Have you been working? I'm going to start eating now. Um, uh, you've been you've been working at um, the, uh, the 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 Daily Caller for a long time. You've never listened to the Arcade Fire. No, no. Actually, I'm joking. You turned me on to the Arcade Fire. Um, you know, five, four or five years. Very ago, whenever I started here, mm -hmm. four years ago. Yeah, they were they were like this was like when they were, and then this other can call this other band called the Beach House. You also this Beach uh, House, yeah. They got a new album the coming Beach out. House. A new album is dropping soon from Beach House, I believe. That's, that's what I, people say. I will get that tape. I will pick up that tape. That uh, that record. See, that's the thing with I will, I will technology. Tape recorded off the radio. Give it to the girl <laughs> I like. Well, it's cool. Technology actually is cyclical because vinyl is probably now pretty cool. Uh, what? So what, if I say, oh, yeah, vinyl, vinyl's cool. Yeah, vinyl is cool. So uh, you can't make. I can't. I, like, it, I have but... to say. So well, it's, it's a richer sound. Well, mm -hmm. it's a richer sound. Uh, 
let's talk about um, Scott Walker's immigration pander, mm -hmm. which um, so look, I, I got I got hit by some of my conservative followers who. Uh, well, and, and first of all, we also used to work with a, a, a fella, no cooler cat than this guy, Matthew Boyle. Um, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. He's, um, so I think, yeah, he, you know, he was, he was sort of our former colleague was, was, you know, uh, trying to help take down Liz Mayer, uh, yeah. when she was working for Walker. But now I think he's praising Walker, uh, for being kind of, for standing up for the American workers. So, mm -hmm. um, that's why I think it's a pander because I think clearly it's a flip flop. Scott Walker used to be, um, pro immigration reform. And now, mm -hmm. and now he's not. So what, what's your take? Yeah, there's, you know, you've heard about the Drudge primary and the Adelson primary and maybe even the Koch primary. And now we have the Boyle primary. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, he turned, even, I think okay, he turned me like, onto the beach house, actually. Um, Matt Boyle? I think that was actually Boyle. By the way, when I, when I, when I like picture the people who are watching like blogging heads, I just picture like 500 Matt Boyles in a room. <laughs> that's that's basically like building letter bombs together. Um, um, just like there's something like he's had what like three positions on immigration in the last eighteen months. I mean, even but if I think you're like very, as long as you if you as long as you flip flop in the direction that the base wants you to flip flop in in a primary, you tend to be okay. Yeah, you that's never. The, it, nobody's ever seems to. Have, Nobody ever seems to evolve away from the base, you know. <laughs> right. Um, Same thing with Hillary, yeah. right? Hillary, yeah. yeah. It, it's it's funny how that happens that they never that they never uh, have any epiphanies. They never that, that, <laughs> they never evolve towards the center, you know. It's always it's always yeah. more in line with their base supporters. It's it's bizarre how that happens. Um. So okay, so you can I mean it it does seem disingenuous. Um. It's based on, you know, tenuous economic arguments. At some point, I mean, it does become the reality that if you have, you know, uh, uh, an excess of labor will drive down the cost of labor. That is kind of the economic argument for, uh, you know, uh, large scale immigration. But correct me if I'm wrong here, Matt, is, is, is like uh, Walker's putting himself to the right of Ted Cruz on this because he's certainly at least he's signaling that. He's not when he says, you know, scaling back legal immigration and he's talking about, you know, his new best friend, Jeff Sessions, he's talking about scaling back high skilled immigration. Right. Which, you know, I think kind of makes him that that puts him he's alone on that in the Republican field. Uh, well, I think that he may technically be talking about that, but I think that the signaling is uh, to sort of the average every everyday American that Hillary loves that, that he, mm -hmm. that, that he doesn't like immigrants. And, uh, again, for, for a Republican party that could potentially capture the cool brand, nothing better than saying, it's not just illegal immigrants that we don't want here. It's no. also the legal ones. We need no. to crack down on that. Uh, it is interesting. Um, <clears throat> it's also interesting because, you know, the Koch brothers fund, this Libre initiative or something, uh, pro-immigration mm -hmm. group. So it, it, it's an interesting yeah. move the Koch on brothers, his part. Yeah, the Koch brothers fund a lot of causes that the Republican Party at least is like nominally against in some way. I mean, the, the Kochs are- Tons, you know, actually, yeah. Yeah, they're anti, you know, they're pro-gay marriage, they're anti-drug uh, war, and, um, you know, and yet- I'd like so, to have a beer with David Koch. Let me just throw it out there. David Koch, let's make it happen. Do you want him to, beer. to fund Matt Lewis for president? Uh, you know, who knows what the second act is, my friend. It's not, I, I'm sure I haven't said anything that might be controversial, but. The gray in know. your temples, you know, it makes you look like mature and, uh, and somebody who uh, people trust. I could help you with the millennials and the youth vote. I can go out there and say that he, he listens to the Arcade Fire. I'd like to look uh, like someone people could trust, and if you could do outreach to the young people, uh, that would be that'd be helpful. Um, Matt, would you, like Bill would you? Let's get this out of the way now. Matt, would you go to a gay wedding? 
Uh, would you yeah. go to a, oh, yeah. would you go to a well, gay I mean, is pizza there, wedding? Is, is there an open is it an open bar? Or Yes, no. let's say I still okay. I still that's an Josh open bar for, for beer and wine. It's an open bar, pizza. okay. Then hell yeah. Um <clears throat> I think that's you know, I think that's the thing. Uh what else was I gonna say? Oh, I do want to I do want to say I do want to say something about the uh, the immigration thing is that you know you mentioned about supply if supply yeah. of labor is increased then eventually wages are lowered yeah. but people always also forget the part about more people are are also going to be creating demand you know mm. more more people here are going to be ordering more pizzas. They're therefore employing another pizza delivery guy and helping the dairy industry and whatever. I mean, it's a dynamic world. And, um, you know, there is a, a worldview that sees, <clears throat> I think that the, I, the worldview that Scott Walker is currently pandering to sees the pie as being only so big. And we are all fighting for a slice of the pie. And if this guy, comes into our country and eats a piece of pie, I get less pie. Mm. I believe in a pie, a pizza pie, that uh, that grows, a bigger pie. And yeah. uh, so anyway, that's that's the worldview difference that we're really fighting over. It's it's, it's a dynamic versus static world. And, uh, and Well, I mean, it's a little around. bit of both, right? I mean, it's not like really one side or the other. I mean, yes, you're going to create more demand, but which are you, you know, which actually has the biggest, bigger economic impact from the Chamber of Commerce's perspective? <clears throat> really, is it is yeah. are they really turned on by the idea of like massive low skilled, you know, immigration because more people are going to be ordering pizzas or is it because it'll keep, you know, is it because, you know, these are like hardworking people who will work for 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 low wages? Like, what's the economic could, incentive there? I mean, well, again, but you could argue that that frees up other people to do other jobs, thereby stimulating. I mean, it, uh, I mean, in theory, yeah. I, I just, it, I just think, and, it's and in more, some you know, cases, yes, it does do that. But in some cases, yeah. it, you know, well, it just there keeps, are certain people, but but I think it's like, okay, let's take creative destruction. There mm -hmm. are people like when, when the. Uh, and this isn't a perfect analogy, of course, but like when the automobile replaces the horse and buggy, there are people mm -hmm. who are losers. There are people who lose their job. There, there are the people horse who and buggy like, in this scenario is is an American born worker. Is, is the American worker clearly? As I said, it's not a perfect. <laughs> it's not a perfect analogy. Oh man, um, Lewis Lewis twenty twenty is already going down in flames. <laughs> oh. all right. Uh, I know. Candidate I know Lewis the good colon, American worker is obsolete. I know that Mickey Kaus, as we speak, is is slicing and dicing this video and preparing a stop mat pack, super pack. Um, but I know that my good friends at Blogging Heads are just going to edit that out. That won't. Uh, that won't. Let you know. no. <laughs> no. I will always be here. I I will bear witness to what Matt Lewis said about the American worker. Please just tell tell my story, tell history my story. <laughs> I, I will keep your story alive in the oral tradition of our people. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so, but the other side of the coin, Will, is yeah. that the people who are trying to essentially stop immigration are essentially the same people who would say, let's stop automation because that displaces workers. Well, a lot okay. of things that happen, a lot of things that happen organically, a lot of things that happen that are considered progress that make our country stronger also mm -hmm. displace some people and create uh, and, and create winners and losers. And, you know, the numbers that I've seen show that the only people harmed by increased immigration are in the short term, non uh, non high school graduates. So high school dropouts mm -hmm. are in the short term harmed uh, in the long term. It seems to be kind of a wash. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, this is, you know, that is the I'm argument, sure you can you find know, you can yeah, find so stats that. Would... There are economic arguments on both sides of this. Uh, I, you know, I'm not an economist. I don't know which is true. It makes some amount of sense. At some point, you have to think that, you know, an excess, of the, you know, of supply of labor, you know, that's axiomatic. You know, if you increase the supply of something, uh, then the price is uh, going down, all things being equal. Um, so... 
yeah, there, there are, there are economic arguments on both sides of this. Well, at the same time, you know, to say it's like, oh, well, this is all in the name of progress and advancement. This is going to make our country stronger. Uh, yeah, well, I, think think, I think the thing we'd agree on is whether I'm right or you're right about the economics. Well, first of all, I'm, this not, is, I'm just playing I'm, the devil's advocate. I am the Daily Beast is a neutral publication or not neutral, but you know, it's, uh, we're not, we're not yeah. partisan. We're not ideological. You know, I'm just, well, I'm point just is, I, really I think to, the one thing we could agree your, on your argument for your candidacy, frankly, I'm oh, here to stop Matt I, Lewis. <laughs> somebody has to, uh, before this yeah. gets out of hand, because the people are clamoring. Um, but if you I think, think about all the stuff that we're going to have to like deal with over the next, um, you know, that are that are going to be done in the name of progress and advancement, and you know, you could make yeah. this this is good on the whole for everybody, like uh, the expansion into, you know, as as robotics become more a reality, as artificial intelligence becomes a reality, and the amount of workers that's going to displace, uh, and what the hell we're going to yeah. do about them? I mean, this is stuff we're going to have to be considering over the next twenty years. If you're going to tell people, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. listen, we're probably going to give your job to a robot at some point, but before then, we're actually going to import labor from another country. Um, <laughs> you know, and you might so you might lose your job to an immigrant before you know the labor uh, before the robot replaces you. That right. this is a hard sell for. But at least America, you can have sex like. with the robots. I think that's coming as well. I mean, maybe so that's the reality. It's a like you're unemployed, it's a you live off the government. You know, this is kind of like some kind of servile state situation where you just live off the government, but you have a sex robot. And that's just gonna, you know, for you know, some a sex people, robot it's a, it's, in every garage. Yes, and every you know, a chicken in every pot. Uh, and for some people, I think it's a positive trade-off. You know, it, it just depends on what gig you're you're giving up. I, I think the thing we agree on, Will, is whether or not this is right, correct economics. Uh, it is smart politics, which is why Scott Walker is pandering, which is why it will probably work, and it's why, as I wrote at the Daily Beast. Mike Huckabee, who's about apparently about to announce for presidency, there is an opening uh, for him. There are Americans out there, and whether they're sort of misguided or not, they are struggling, and there are sort of working class folks who have conservative, social conservative instincts, but mm. um, but they they uh, they're struggling, and whether they're right about the economics or not, a message that says. We need an American president to stand up for Americans and help American workers. That's going to resonate. Yeah. I think that there is there is a, a constituency out there for this. Yeah, I think that I, I, I'm in complete agreement with you on that because we, we, we've talked a lot about this over the past uh, couple of years. Um, you know, that would it, like a huge swath of voters because, you, you know, uh, the Republicans always like, especially so it's like it's like a very kind of like coastal elite Republican uh, like consensus is like, you know, it's like, we got to stop talking about social issues. Um, and we just got to stick to the economic stuff. Uh, cause people think, you know, uh, the Republicans, like wealthy Republicans, elite Republicans, they think that the economic message is somehow more attractive when you actually look at the polls. I mean, you know, like a 20 week abortion ban, that's like the, the that's maybe like the, the, the single most, uh, the popular policy being pushed by the GOP in terms of just like raw poll numbers. Um, yeah, and conservatives yeah, didn't start winning uh, elections until yeah. the social conservatives join. Yeah, social conservatives, I mean, social conservatism is A, less unattractive than they think it is, and B, yeah. uh, economic conservatism, the economic message of the Republican Party uh, in terms of like the, 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 the supply side message and the creative destruction message, <clears throat> the, uh, the Bain Capital message, if you will. Uh, that's really deeply unattractive to people. Um, yeah. people you know what, people, Will? People, I, yeah. I totally agree with you. I totally agree. I think we, yeah. I think we overestimate how, uh, how much social conservatism hurts conservatives. And I think we dramatically underestimate how much fiscal conservatism hurts. And obviously, we shouldn't yeah. construct our ideology based on polling. But, like, I feel like I could create... Now, people won't believe this because... Because my like stated ideology mm -hmm. is is what it is, and I'm and I and I don't care because I don't need to get elected yet. But I do believe I could write a speech that say a Pat Buchanan would give that mm -hmm. would kick ass. Like I feel like if Mike Huckabee or Scott Walker would just like give themselves over and let me basically tell them what to say, yeah, people would by the end of the week be having pitchforks and lanterns storming yeah. the Capitol. 
Um, I think that there are buttons that can be pushed out there that uh, populist buttons. Yeah. Um, you got to go against the man, man. I'm totally. Listen, I think. I, I, yeah. Uh, the, the problem with that, I think you go out there and you give the, the you give the speech that gets like, you know, the peasants up with their pitchforks. That means, uh, yeah. you know, the money people aren't giving you money anymore. Um, you know, because uh, <laughs> there is. The ruling class in this country will, you know, it's like if, if, if your message is storm the barricades and burn it all down, well, you know, uh, Sheldon Adelson isn't yeah. going to pay for those ads. Um, I think he did. I guess, right. I guess and, he did briefly for, for Newt Gingrich in South Carolina last time around. Well, but, but actually uh, the ads he ran for Newt Gingrich were incredibly yeah, exactly. popular. They were, they were anti came, Yeah, I mean, Newt Romney Gingrich won the South down. Carolina primary by attacking <laughs> Mitt Romney from the left on economics. Yeah, totally. Uh, which, I which think just, there is a <clears throat> yeah. there's a market there's a market for this uh, for this sort of what, let's call it what it is demagoguery, populist demagoguery from the right. <clears throat> there is a market for this that I think is un not untapped. It's it, people flirt with it, but it's underexploited, <clears throat> and I think there's a market for it. But you got to do it just right. And, yeah. uh, you know, people like you, Santorum, you call it demagoguery, but don't you, I mean, these people, you know, these are people, this is, this is the middle class in America that has kind of been left behind. Um, no, there, there's a legitimate reasons why people are pissed off. Yeah. And if you, I mean, like, you know, you know, there's, if you're in the manufacturing industry and you sell it, jobs. It, yeah. It's like, and you know, your options are, it's like, uh, well, this, this guy believes, uh, uh, abortions should uh, take place in the third trimester of pregnancy, and this guy wants to privatize my Medicare. Um, you don't have a candidate in that field. There's right. nobody. It's like you're you feel like you're getting screwed either way there, and uh, maybe rightly so. But you know, going and back I think, to, I, I mean, there's well, not like the, Republicans don't get this. It's like, and maybe I I don't know if we're going to see the Republicans go for something like I mean, last time Mitt Romney tacitly endorsing the Ryan plan by making Ryan his uh, beef pick. But, you know, I do think it's like this understa like this truth of American politics that nobody ever wants to, to hear, I think, in, in the circles that we run in, is that there is not a constituency in the country that believes in Medicare reform. It just simply doesn't exist outside of, you know, New York City and Washington, D.C. Well, like, um, like Chris Christie, you know, <clears throat> throwing what I think is sort of a Hail Mary, uh, talking an about entitlement thing? reform. Yeah. Well, he, no, he's exactly right about, you know, we should be raising the Social Security retirement age. We should be okay. means testing. Like any, <clears throat> I think anybody who's intellectually honest uh, would agree to that, to, to save the system, for, if nothing else, right? But while I, you think you and I and probably most of our viewers here would agree that that's a sound policy, um, even liberals, I think, if you were to put them under sodium pentothal, would agree to that. Uh, it's very dangerous politics. And I think Mike Huckabee wisely, you know, from a political standpoint, comes out against it. He's the only one to really speak out against it. Yeah. He's tapping into this, you know, this sort of thing you're talking about here. Yeah, I mean, Chris Christie is also trying to mean that, that he's trying to tap into it too. He did the entitlement reform thing, which I guess is, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, I guess the demographic he's really speaking to there is 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 like, you know, the American Enterprise Institute and, uh, you know, people on Wall Street. Uh, but then he goes out there the other day, yesterday, he said that we need to take a second look at NAFTA, which I thought was a remarkable thing for a candidate. Oh, I didn't say. see and, that. Yeah, and that's it's tapping into the same that's, populist energy. You know? Yeah, it's, it's, the, the giant you know, sucking that, That's sound another thing that people Australia. like, you know, the people in our world, like, overstate the popularity of free trade. This is, you know, free trade is an issue like like gay marriage, where there's just this elite consensus developed, and uh, it was just kind of done. Um, uh, but like free trade was I think never this whole really damn effectively. Things, this whole damn sold. thing's being orchestrated by the trilateral commission. Will you and I? Know no, that. no, no, you know, Matt. That's absurd. The trilateral commission is a joke. Um, <laughs> no, it all goes through Bilderberg. Um, yes, that's right. Which is and the Queen of England. Yes, John Ronson should get on this right away <clears throat> when it, for his next book. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I think we're I think we're basically in agreement that I'm right. Um, I, I you, agree with nothing you've said. Okay, uh, which is good television. Let's yeah. talk a little bit uh, in closing because uh, we only got a few minutes. I want to delve into you, your personal life, a little bit. Um, 
and uh, you were you were on you're a regular guest on this show. The kids called the Red Eye. The Red Eye yeah. is on was on Fox News. Uh, talk uh, if you would tell us about that because because it's apparently popular amongst uh, the kids. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's popular among kids, uh, insomniacs, alcoholics, the unemployable. <laughs> uh, That's our demographic too, man. Yeah, you know the people who you find up at three a.m. You know they go from uh, blogging head straight to red eye. Uh, it's it's a good program. Um, uh, Gregory Gutfeld used to be the host. Uh, uh, he is he has since departed. Um, uh, he's going to have a new show. Uh, so it's. Uh, Andrew Levy and Joanne Nosichinsky are now the, uh, the, the, the main panelists, and then it's a rotating cast of characters. I'll be on next Thursday night. Um, nice. if, you know, if your life has taken some kind of awful turn and, and you're up all night, uh, please watch. Please tune in. Uh, I'll pull my earlobe. Amazingly, in. though. That's how I'll be uh, signaling to you. Amazingly, though, right? They get millions of people watch this show, even though it's on yeah. at, like, 3 a.m. It's It's... I think they get more people watching than some other networks that, that have shows on prime time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess it, it does. The Nielsen numbers are really good. Um, uh, I, that's all science that I don't understand. But, uh, yeah, a lot of people, they, they TiVo it. They DVR it. And then they, uh, they, uh, they watch it the next morning. I've been recognized qu twice uh, because of Red Eye. One time I got a drink out of it. And the other time, nice. a woman with red hair just walked by and said, you make me laugh late at night. And I assume that was about Red Eye. Wow. See, that's, they yeah. say that I've always, you know, my goal has always been to be a, a minor celebrity. Um, I think it's way better. I mean, seriously, like the people who are recognized everywhere, I know it sounds great. What a drag it would be. Um, yeah. The best fame, I forget who said it, but they said it's a writer's fame where it'll get you a dinner reservation, but it won't get you interrupted during dinner. Um, yes, yes. That's what I'm kind that, of that is for. That is the ideal thing. You know, you don't want people coming up to you and like pitching you their like novel or their screenplay or their idea for a television show on Blogging Heads TV. But there are people like that are wildly successful that you don't know what they look like. I don't think I could pick Steve Miller out of a, out of a lineup. Um, Who's even though Steve Miller from you know, the Joker, uh, the space cowboy guy, Steve Miller band, or let's go to politics or even writing Michael Lewis, you know, my, my uncle, a lot of people don't know, uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the famed, the famed author of Moneyball and, and other books, not sure I can mm -hmm. pick him out of a lineup either. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah. that's the kind of fame. That's the kind of fame that you what actually gives about. Michael Lewis away is the neck tattoos. But yeah, I know what you're talking yes. about. Yes. <laughs> now, see, the other side is the Malcolm Gladwell, easily mm -hmm. spotted with that that mane of hair. You know, that's yeah. You, you know, that's that's a guy who's who's looking to get noticed. Yeah, yeah. Michael uh, Lewis is uh, 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 Malcolm Gladwell is the kind of guy who wants to be like accosted in Central Park. You know, yes. he wants somebody to come over and yell at him about his his book about the Beatles or something. You know, because that that's what he lives for. I feel like minor celebrity is what we should all hope for, like known, uh, but not, but not interrupted, not, not harassed. Known, but not interrupted. Yeah. Known, but not interrupted. The name of that'd my be next a good name. Album. That'd be a good name for this the show DMZ. instead of, uh, uh, the DMZ. <laughs> Indeed. All right. So we're at the end of our rope here. Uh, let's plug stuff. How do people keep in touch? How do they follow you? How do they read your, uh, your occasional musings. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, yeah. Speaking of not being wanting to be interrupted, uh, just follow me on Twitter. Uh, just at Will <laughs> Ron, W-I-L-L-R-A-H-N. Uh, it's not a so very this... good Twitter account. I'm not going to lie. I'm mediocre at Twitter. Uh, yeah. Matt Lewis has a better Twitter account. Um, That's true. A lot of people have better Twitter accounts. But, you know, it's there. If you tweet at me, I'll probably see it. Um, yeah, so, so do that. Tweet at me. Blogging heads, this redhead, uh, this redhead uh, age range, Will. What are we talking here? Yeah, I'm saying about 30 and cute. Oh. Yeah. There you go, man. So, I would there say, I mean, that's, that's, that's my demo, you know? That's, that's, that's right where you want to be. For me, yeah, I'm point. usually spotted by eh, 78 and a half year old men who want to argue about uh, 
my position on uh, repealing Glass-Steagall. I don't know why that is, but I feel like you may have zeroed in on a... a LaRouche. Basically, you're talking about Lyndon LaRouche. <laughs> yeah, <is>. essentially, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I interrupted. You're plugging more stuff. Plug away. No, I'm not really plugging anything. Um, you know, that's it. Uh, what else do I got going on? You know, uh, read the daily Um, it's a good website. You'll enjoy it. Uh, you'll watch red eye late at night, uh, early in the morning. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, I, I don't know. What, what do people usually plug on something like this? I don't have like, I'm not, I, think like you've... Uh, I don't have, I don't have like a single dropping or anything like that. If I'm working on a story, I'm not going to tell you about it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think that's good. You you were a, a frequent guest on uh, the Matt Lewis Show podcast, Matt Lewis and the News. I am, which is a lot of fun, which people should listen to. Yeah, yeah. Check yeah. that out. And uh, Will Ron, thank you for uh, coming into the DMZ. All right, my pleasure, Matt. Thank you.